There we go. Welcome to Stories Around the Fire. Tonight's guest is Danny Chirago, who is a writer, musician, actor, and filmmaker whose talents span a variety of genres and outlets. Some may know him as one of the many zany personas that he takes on as lead vocalist in his band, The Fuckfitos, who are as much a performance art, performance art piece as they are rad musical ensemble. Others may recognize his voice from games such as Fallout 4, in which he plays my favorite companion, the lovable troublemaking ghoul, Mayor Hancock, or from games such as Red Dead Redemption 2, Rock Band, Guitar Hero, Project Altered Beast, and so many others. If you don't know him from there, you may have been fortunate enough to experience him as he wrote, directed, and starred in the surreal, delightful fever dream that is Mimsy. So I'm going to add him now, and this time it's going to work, y'all. And I'm so excited. I just want y'all to know. Cameron, I know. I'm so excited. Let me send it to him. Let's go. All right. We're going to get him this time. Oh, that is so funny. One of the comments says I have a sexy pinup Hancock hanging in my fallout room. Very cool. Yeah, so I've spent a lot of time on Fallout 4. Fallout 3, too. Okay, here we go. You guys ready? Time. Cross your fingers. Rub your rabbit's feet. Yeah! <laughs> hey, how's it going? Oh, sorry. hi. How are you? Forgot I was watching the uh, Republican National Convention. Oh. Yeah. Should have been a Confederate flag, batter, battle flag. How's yeah. it going, BJ? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing all right. Hanging in Thank there. Thank you so much for being here. Um, everybody Pleasure. that's watching is super excited that you're here. Oh. <laughs> um. So I'll jump right in. Okay. Um. Where are you from? Are you from Earth? Am I from Earth? I don't think any of us are from Earth, ultimately. You don't think so? No, I think meteors probably brought life here from another planet. Wow, that's interesting. I think that's probably the source of all things. It's the heavens. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm from a planet called uh, Walmart. It's, uh, it's not in this solar system. It's in a very distant one. And... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, contrary to what the name might conjure, it's actually, it's a beautiful, harmonious kind of egalitarian place. It yeah. sucks, though, because now people hear Walmart, right? What do they think? They think about that mm -hmm. shitty conglomerate. It's, you know, mm -hmm. so greedy. They have to pay their workers wages so low they have to go on welfare while they're working. But that's yeah. not what, what Walmart originally, it's a, it should, it, for me, it's the home planet. It's a beautiful place. You'll have to send me so, those. What's that? You'll have to send me those coordinates. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We'll see. You, you, you're being evaluated first. It's a oh, oh okay. I gotta... Go to Walmart. Oh no. Yeah. Um. So, how long have you been <laughs> performing, and like, where did you get your start? Where did I get my start? Um, I remember doing like a fetal soft shoe when I was in my mom. Um, they actually captured it on a sonogram. There's there's footage somewhere. I don't know. I'll put it up on Instagram at some point. Yes. So um, a long time, long time. Okay. Yeah. Um, what was your first job? What was my first show? Job. What was your first job? That was it. I was performing for some some doctors. Wait, did you say my first job or my first show? Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to get job. closer to this phone. See, folks at home, technical difficulties, of course. It, this is high tech. We were going to do this on my desktop, and now we're doing it on my little phone. Last yeah. minute, so you know, working Mark. out the kinks. So, what was That's my first job? Is that what you said? Yeah. Um, I actually I had a part time job uh, when I was about 14, uh, working in, inside a hippo, and um, it was it sucked. I mean, it's you know, people right. complain about their jobs on the front lines of the pandemic, it sucked. First of all, the hippo swallowed me. And there was a chance I was going to get chomped to death. They're very dangerous. Not carnivorous, but dangerous. And so I lived in the stomach, and the lighting was terrible. Uh, the conditions were bad, you know, for food. I would just kind of eat half-eaten pigeons and stuff. And I was supposed to, like, scrub the 
stomach walls and stuff keep it spick and span and um eventually i got regurgitated and i never looked back well job I'm sucked you got out of there it could always be worse folks yeah yeah i know target <laughs> sucks but it could be worse <laughs> okay so um can you talk about where mimsy came from mimsy uh the mm -hmm. character mimsy mm -hmm. all right let's see where do i start not from Walmart. He actually came from an adjacent planet uh -huh. called uh, J.C. Penney's. Um, it's about uh -huh. two or three light years away. Now, Mimsy, um, let me think about that. It's a good question. So musically, it came from this little keyboard that I have. Um, it's a Yamaha PSS 100. And it's, wow. um, I don't know what year it's from, but I've had it for a long ass time. And it has all kinds of nifty features including rhythms let's see if we can it's been so long since i've used it this was your march one i think it was let's try it style d1 <laughs> no it wasn't march one i think it was march two style d three That's it. <laughs> right i've gotten a lot of mileage out of this thing really uh, oh yes um there's a demo feature where you press like demo and it takes you through all the different styles of music, little so uh, sonic palette that it has. Um, mm -hmm. I actually, I never, I haven't made this. I don't know that I ever will. Maybe it's time has come and gone, but um, I had a whole like uh, music video idea based on the demo song for the Omaha. Oh. Um, so that's how Mimsy started musically. Um, but theatrically, I, uh, no, it really started with that. It started with that button. It started with Style D3 on the Yamaha PSS 100. Nice. And then it turned into, because probably people are like, who the fuck is Mimsy? Who is this guy? Who's this dude with the sideburns? Thank you, my big Corona pandemic project. Thank you so much. That's right. They Not look nice. I'm forever, but I like them for now. So, you know, Ooh, they look good. often fluffy. I like to play with them. <laughs> I haven't had hair in a long time. So being able to stroke my sideburns is one of my few pleasures. Get your mind out of the gutter. Um, so it's, it developed into this uh, short film in which Mimsy is basically this, I don't know, poor pinheaded character forced to do this cutesy mechanical dance in a theater that may or may not exist by some uh, super ego-like scientists in lab coats. Originally, fun fact, it was gonna be a stern looking Victorian suited people, people, women in like bonnets and such yeah. and men in sideburns and what have you. Um, but it was just a lot easier for me to take my dad's uh, white coat, put it on and become the doctors instead with the fake beard, fake goatee. So yeah, I made that. And then um, actually around that time, I wrote a screenplay called oh. Leave It to Mimsy, um, as yet unproduced. Uh, so, okay, dating myself, but this was like early 2002. And I wrote this in the aftermath of 9-11 um, and how disgusted I was by the suddenly McCarthyist backlash that I saw around me where any level of criticism or dissent was deemed patriotic to the point of people being losing their careers. Ooh, taking a little puff there. Have a puff. Mm -hmm. Have a puff. Oh, it's a sip of water. I thought you were taking a draw, a pull on your pipe. I'm, um, I behave on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do drugs, stay in school, kids. Um, mm -hmm. So Leave It to Mimsy is set in that time and it really reflects my kind of frustration and fury and disgust with what seemed to me to be my first real taste of living in the McCarthy era. Mm -hmm. So I wrote this script and Mimsy is the star of that, but he's, he's definitely more of a trickster Mimsy. He's definitely more of a, I don't wanna say malevolent because tricksters are sort of amoral and I think ultimately they serve a positive purpose, but in Leave It to Mimsy, he's definitely more of a, he, he's, he's different than he is in the film. I think in the film, um, which I just called Mimsy, the short film, the short musical film, mm -hmm. I think he's, you're seeing glimpses of who he's going to become. And I think you see that full blossomed in, uh, in Leave It to Mimsy. And I may make it at some point. It's, yeah, I mean, it's been so many goddamn years. I think it would still shock people, no doubt. Um, and I think one of the things about it is, is now it's a period piece. I would set it in that time. I would actually set it in the time leading up to Christmas 2001. Um, oh. 
there would be a period piece. Maybe I'll make it at some point. Maybe, I don't know. I'm uh, here for it if you do. <laughs> you're sweet. I mean, making any kind of video and doing it right takes, you know, it takes a lot of money. It takes, now, you know, it takes a crew. It's not easy to have a crew these days. But uh, at some point, people will be able to actually be around each other without, you know, threatening the existence of their fellow human beings. Right. So how did your fans receive Mimsy? Did they receive, you know, like the Fuxitos fans? Did They do what the fuck I tell them, that's how. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I'm kidding, sort of. Um, yeah, I mean, the band is really, you know, it's my little baby. Um, I couldn't do it without my lineup of folks, lineups, actually. I started the band in the Bay Area, and then I moved to L.A., and I started a second lineup. But they're all in the band. So part of the charm of that is... When I would travel up to the Bay, we could do shows and I wouldn't have to drag four or five people with me, because touring not because I would, wouldn't want to be with them, but because touring is very expensive. So right. and ideally, I should have lineups all over the world. Not now, not in the middle of a fucking plague, but ideally, I should have lineups all over the world. And then touring might actually be feasible. And that would be nice because live is really the way to do it. Um, yeah. Video is... It's hard to do video right in such a way that captures a live performance. It really is. Technically, it's hard. You need yeah. resources. You've got to capture it with multi-track audio. You have to capture it with multi-camera. You got to try and put people in it, which is the, you know, people think that, you know, they grab your little device and you can be anywhere. Not really. You get a pale slice of it. You got to meat space still reigns supreme, even in the, the age of rotting meat. Um, but uh, where the hell was that? What were we talking about? Who am I? Walmart. Well, I'm from a planet called <laughs> Long What's ago. Thank you, Queen name? 3 EZ. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah. That's Regina. Yeah. Hi, Regina. Hi, Regina. Yeah. Um, so what's the crazy thing? What's, what's that what? No, so how I'm did sorry. they receive it? So anyway, that, so it's my project, but, you know, I don't mean to be too dictatorial. I call myself a benevolent autocrat, but... Um, yeah, I, how did they receive it? I don't know. I mean, I think, look, one of the things about that song is I feel like you have to see the video to get the full idea. Because mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a, a type of, usually this term is used in classical music, but it's called program music. And program music is basically music that sonically tells a story. Um, and I think that's kind of what that music does. But you can actually get a better sense of it when you watch the video. Then again, so many people have watched it online and were like, I don't know what the fuck I'm looking at. So, but at least there's a glimmer of hope that you get the story if you watch it. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I was, I was Poor thing. She, you know, she's like, I don't know what's real or not anymore. Good, then I've achieved my goal. Right. Um, I watched like chunks of it. It's like, you know, pieces of it on YouTube. Chunks. You blew chunks. Of, I'm sorry. Oh, you watched chunks of it. Chunks yeah. of Mimsy. Oh, yeah. You know why? When I was submitting to film festivals, some of them, um, are there still film festivals? Yeah, there are. But when I was submitting to film festivals, some of them ha had required that it hadn't been shown in its entirety online. So oh. I put half of it online. It was done at that point. But I put half of it online, the first half. And then eventually I just put the whole thing out there. It's like, um, yeah. that's where it is. All four minutes of it or whatever, I don't know. It was, well, a tough, it was a tough project to finish. It was very effects heavy, so. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of got stalled in post. But you push on. You do. Hi, Scarlet Koala. Do you know these people? I know Regina and Cameron. I don't know if anybody else, my mom might be on here. Hi, mom, how's it going? <laughs> hey, BJ's mom. I, you know, I just, I had to, I didn't want to spread it too far. Who knew? I mean, for all I knew, I was going to, you know, you, you were going to assault me on camera or something like that. Then no, again, the, the night is young. Maybe that's still coming. That's yeah. right. Okay. What's the craziest thing you've done as part of one of your Fuxedo's performances? Because I've watched a few of those um, on YouTube also, and they're yeah. pretty wild. You get a pale slice of it. You get a little piece mm -hmm. of it. You know, it's, I, I have to remember, I can't hold it against these nice people out there because most of what we do is not even online. It's just, mm -hmm. I need to, what I want to do sort of is dig through all these mountains of footage that I have and see if what's technically audio visually worth putting up. Mm 
because something could have been great in the room, but it distorts on the camera mic or, you know what I mean? And that's nothing against the fine people who are shooting. Alex McGinnis did a really nice job shooting, but it's, there's technical constraints. So I got to start digging through it and putting more of it online so you guys can get a better sense of what I do. Yeah. But what's the craziest thing I've ever done Yeah. on stage? I mean, it depends on who you ask. I don't know. One time I ran, <laughs> yeah, I was playing in this little joint on Fairfax Avenue, which is the middle of LA. Um, it's a defunct joint. It's now defunct. It's called, it's called the Nova Express, Cafe Nova Express, I think it was. One of the earlier places I played when I was here in LA. And, uh, you know, I used to, used to still use a lot of fake guns in this age of, uh, you know, police shootings. And I did run out into the middle of the street with one of those at one point, but I lived to tell the tale. That's pretty crazy, I think. I think I can yeah. objectively look at that and go, yeah, that was pretty mentally ill of you, Danny. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's been all kinds of uh, chicanery. Um, geez, I don't know. Uh, nothing else is coming to mind. I mean... Crazy in a different direction is thinking you can pull off a 20 to 30 minute musical theatrical story with one or two rehearsals um, in front of a live audience, tightrope in it without a net. But those all came off pretty great. So I don't yep. know if I'd call that crazy or not. Yeah. None of those are online. I got to do something about that. Um. <laughs> it's, it's basically Fuxedo Theater. Yes. So what has been your favorite Fuxedo show and why? Uh, hmm. I'd say a couple come to mind. Few, few come to mind. One of them was we did a really fun show about four years ago in Oakland at the Fox Theater, taking another pull of a pipe. It looks like you're smoking a pipe. I love it. Mm -hmm. Remember, kids, smoking is bad for you. If you're going to do it, make sure no one sees you. No. Um, yeah, it was at the Fox Theater in lovely downtown Oakland. It was put on by Undercover Presents pretty great organization led by a woman named Liz Luke up in the Bay Area. And she, um, obviously not right now, although she might be doing stuff online, I don't know, but she put together a pretty amazing show that was a tribute to, ooh, hearts and bubbles. I know. <laughs> From I don't know who, maybe Scarlet Koala. Yes, she doesn't look Scarlet. She doesn't look like a marsupial. I'm a little disappointed, Scarlet. Um, Pretty amazing tribute to the Green Day album, Dookie. And the whole thing was a benefit for um, Gilman Street, which is a pretty legendary, infamous um, uh, DIY performance space mm -hmm. up in, uh, I think technically you call it Berkeley, kind of industrial Berkeley. And, uh, you know, the Bay Area has gentrified a lot. So that's not so good for DIY, for punky performance spots. So this was a big fundraiser for them. And a ton of bands, I don't know how many, a dozen or so. Each one of us were assigned a different track from the album Dookie. And I got the kind of the star track, which was Basket Case. And um, it's like a, you know, honestly, not a big Green Day fan. There's stuff fine for which just I'm not a big fan, but took like a three minute basically punk pop song, turned it into like a 12 minute, um, I think like a suite. So there, it, it turns into sort of like um, dueling pharmaceutical commercials in the middle of it. So we were one of the many, and there were some great bands. It was really eclectic. Uh, Martin Luther, who's a pretty amazing soul singer and guitarist, he was involved. Um, I mean, it was eclectic as hell, all, all different kinds of styles, um, orchestral to punk to whatever. Um, uh, and there were, you know, the Fox is a nice, big, gorgeous Art Deco venue. And there were a good couple couple grand worth of couple K people there, including the Green Day dudes and Mr. Jello Biafra from Dead Kennedys. And um, I mean, I made the mistake of, quote unquote, the crazy mistake of writing a bunch of words for myself to learn. It's very, it's storytelling. So there's a lot of words in it. And, you know, you got to just drill it and drill it and drill it and drill it and drill it to the point where you have think, you hope, you never know when you go out in the middle of battle what's going to happen, but where you hope that no matter what, you're going to have the, the uh, peace of mind to keep the peace going. Because if, if I fail, the whole damn thing kind of goes. And then 2,000 people going. Something we want to avoid. Look, I've had moments on stage, pretty good at memorizing, and I'm pretty good at thinking on my feet on stage, probably even better. But um, I have had those moments. They're about a quarter second long 
where I'm not sure what the lyric is that I'm supposed to about to say. And I will do anything to avoid that fractional split second of abject terror. So you drill it, you drill it, you drill it. There's never enough time to do it, but you drill it, you drill it. And we went on stage and it, it was great. It was really well received. There were a bunch of people who probably were not used to what, what I do, what we do. And yet they were very, very receptive of it. So that's the one that, that comes to mind. There's some other ones. Are you guys are talking amongst themselves? Hi, queen. Oh, you're probably yeah, talking to me. They're regular. Well, you're talking to me. Maybe I'm the queen. That's fine. I'll put on the <laughs> I've got no problems with that. Kiara and sideburns. Yes. <laughs> okay. Let's talk fallout. I know everyone asks you about fallout, but I have to. No, not everyone. Just people who care about fallout. Okay. Well, I really care about fallout. <laughs> um. So were you prepared for like, the the fanfare behind it absolutely 100 percent not really no i mean i didn't even know it was fallout um i've said this before but king is that me or bj i don't know cross vine i know that name um what the hell were we talking about oh right uh, blockbuster video game franchise soon to be a, a amazon series not soon it's not gonna be soon um i didn't even know it was fallout they don't tell you these things they disguise these games they don't want people to leak, even though people always do, but it's, it's probably not actors. It's, you know, inside people. We're not inside people, sorry. Um, so they don't tell you. So you get, a, you get a working name for the project and you don't know what it is. And I don't think I'm breaking any rule. I mean, you sign a, obviously an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, which, you know, if you break confidentiality, they'll fuck you hard. Some people are into that. Sometimes I am, but anyway. Um, so Fallout was Angelina. That was the name of Fallout. That was the working title of the game. It was called Angelina. I don't see why I can't say that right now. The game's out. It's, who knows? Uh, 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 Red Dead Redemption 2, I don't remember. Is it 2? Which one came out? 7, 15. That was called Dark Future. Dark Future. So we don't know. We don't know what we're working on. I, I, I worked on this project the best bad companion, like not bad meaning bad, but bad meaning good to quote, what was that, Run DMC? Um, uh, what the hell was I talking about? I lost it. That's it, this is it, I finally lost it. No, I'll bring you back, hang on. Um, we what were, were talking, talking about Fallout. Right. And so it was like a year and a half long process, not constant, but I'd go into the recording studio and do four hours and then maybe do a couple more sessions that week or maybe not. And then three months later, hey, you available next week? You know, so um, over the course of a year and a half, it was like a year into it when I found out it was actually Fallout. Somebody, I don't want to get anyone in trouble, you know, whatever, water under the bridge. But it was somebody had left out a script and it said the word Fallout on it. And I honestly, my gaming days are long behind me, but I had heard of Fallout. Um, right. Kind of coincidentally, actually, I have a cousin who's a big gamer. He's a big Fallout fan. He saw me and the Fuxitos, my band, do the ink spots, I Don't Want to Set the World on Fire, yeah. which I did because I love the ink spots and right. because I wanted to ironically play on the fact that I do kind of want to set the world on fire, only constructively. Um, and it starts with just dissonant, chaotic noise, and it builds to a fever pitch crescendo, and then suddenly this beautiful, ethereal 40s tune starts um, hey, Tara, 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 Tara. Um, so I just did that on my own. I like the ink spots. I like irony, you know. He came up after we did it. I was like, are you, are you a follow? Is that a follow reference? And I was like, no. So um, it's coincidental. Um, but so I had heard of Fallout. He might have been the reason why I heard of Fallout. That was what, Fallout 3 trailer, I guess? Um, it's a pretty great trailer, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so a year into it, I found out it was Fallout. But yeah. then again, it's like, I knew it was a big game. I knew it was a big credit. Um, I didn't know that this guy was going to be a fan fave. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know that I was going to see, you know, a little fan art with him with little flowers in his, not hair, but I guess what, rotten skin. Um, that mm -hmm. was kind of, at first I was like, eh. <laughs> um, so I didn't know that. I wasn't prepared yeah. for that. It's been nice well, in general. The love. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Um, whose fandom do you think is more intense? Hancock's or the Fuxedos? Who's what? Who's what is more intense? Like whose fans are more oh, intense? Fans? That's a good question. I don't know. Different kinds of, uh, of uh, in, do you say intense? Was that the word you use? Yeah. <laughs> Different kinds of intensity. Sometimes with overlap, it's true. Some overlap, some have become one and the other. Yeah. But uh, yeah, good question. We'll call it a draw. <laughs> Tara, 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 Tara. Sorry, you were saying? Um, on your Instagram, you share some of your... <laughs> like hiking and travels and stuff. So Sometimes. is that, yeah. Little tiny little narrow slices of my actual life, private life, right. what have you. Yeah, right. so are you, okay. If anyone has these days, mm -hmm. the eye in the sky. So then I should skip that one since it's private. No, go, ahead. go ahead, no, I'm just giving you shit. <laughs> Sorry, I should let you talk at some point. It no, is... it's okay. This is your yeah. inner, you, you talk. Got me going here. I know, good. The water. <laughs> In my piece. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, so do you travel often? Is that like your like other joy? Other travel things? every chance I get. And that was has been one nice thing about this gig is it has opened up certain travel opportunities. Sure, I love traveling. I love going into nature and I can do that around my house, mm -hmm. which is nice, but it's always nice to go into different kinds of nature too. What Never you know think? what you're going to get. A little bit of chaos in actual brand. What were you saying? Um, where's your favorite place that you've ever been? Favorite place ever? ever. You're asking tough. These are hard-hitting, incisive, difficult. The kinds of questions journalists are expected to ask. No. <laughs> I appreciate that. It's good. It's nice to see the, the branch of, uh, what is it, the Fifth Estate doing, doing what it's meant to do, being oppositional and calling to question the Powerful figures that are fucking our world on a royal basis. Um, favorite place? Favorite place? I probably don't have one. But um, Yosemite is pretty fucking amazing. Uh, Bass Lake in Marin County is pretty great for a day trip if you live up there like I used to. In California? Uh, Bass Lake is in Marin County, which is the county just north of San Francisco. If you go across the Golden Gate Bridge away from San Francisco, you're in Marin County. You've seen pictures, I promise. Mid Muir Woods is up there. Bass Lake is up there. I sh I've said too much. No, it's a place that's gotten a little more attention over the years. Um, laughing my ass off, it's pronounced Terra. My parents were more, that's not moronic. That's, they could have spelled it like that, though. Like the earth, that would have been really nice and earth, earthy. Um, am I supposed to answer their questions, BJ, or yeah, just no. yours? No, answer them too. You? What? With my Do astrological you? sign, Becca? No, I'm kidding. Um, well, I got to heal my knee. True story. My knee's a bit banged up. I did too much hiking because the, uh, the fucking police curfew. I could only hike right in, right near my house, and it wore out my goddamn knee. So I got to heal this knee first before I go hiking anywhere. Um, hopefully back in Griffith Park is my that's my stomping ground. Though. It's it's right here, right here. It's right over there. It's over there. I'm not telling you where because people might show up and stalk me. Yeah, so well, let's I see what else. Uh, south of France ain't too shabby. Let me tell you. Um, gosh, where else? Uh, Scotland. Shout out to Scotland. Katie and company, including the uh, Iron Bruiser. Go to Scotland if you can. I would do the accent, but I don't want to piss anybody off. Oh, do we have any Scottish here tonight? <laughs> Probably not. Um, uh, you know, you do an accent like that, you're gonna, no one's gonna like it. Especially because yeah. it's gonna be kind of cartoonish. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, so what are we talking about? Is that enough? I give you enough yes, places. Enough. If you're ready to, for it to be enough. <laughs> Paris. Paris. Monaco. Um, eh. Eh. What? You want to see Monaco. If you want to see what real life Disneyland is like, go to Monaco. Disneyland? Real life Disneyland. It's Monaco. But, you know, I'm not a fan of Disneyland. So you, yeah. maybe, maybe that's not a good parallel for people. What do you mean? Like the, the architecture? Sort of, yeah. Like yeah. this. Oh, it's a castle. But, oh, it wasn't built in the 1950s out of concrete. Yeah, that's, that's Monaco. Monaco is like, it's too clean. It's too, it's too shiny for Europe. You, you know, yeah. you're in Paris, you have all this dirt and filth and texture and, you know, gritty beauty. Monaco is all shiny and shiny and new. And it's, um, yeah, it's a beautiful part of the world naturally. But yeah, don't go to Monaco. Don't go to Monaco. Watch, I'm going to get like 
hate emails from the you monitor are. <laughs> council. You absolutely are. Yeah. I live right next to Disney World. It fucking sucks. Yeah. Yeah, I fucking yeah. hate Disney with passion. I hate the corporation. I hate the yeah. I hate the places. I mean, my idea of a good time, like non pandemic life, like I can't imagine voluntarily. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry to laugh because I know a lot of you love this, that pe people seem to love these places. But my idea of like on a day off, going to Disneyland, walking around a bunch of concrete overpriced, crawling with consumer, no, it's like a Boschian nightmare to me. It's like walking into that right hand panel on the Garden of Earthly Delights, the Hieronymus Bosch painting, you know, where it's like these people are getting sodomized by like, I don't know, <laughs> guinea pig like humanoid creatures and there's an eggshell melt it's love the painting don't want to live in it so no i don't go to fucking disneyland except when i have to yeah and i'm not i'm not gonna i'm not gonna elaborate that detail it's a nightmare sorry kids you know <laughs> but yeah i hate disney disney's one of my big enemies yeah real smart thing to be saying when they own so much of the showbiz world Right, oh, well. they're writing you off right now. <laughs> yeah, just kidding, Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's your what's your favorite way to express yourself? All of these things that you're really good at. What is your favorite or your most rewarding? Uh, I don't know. Good question. I mean, I feel like my term for art is very. It's a lot looser. Some people have a very narrow term: human trap made by a mouse. Oh, I thought you were talking about me. I thought it said Danny. It's just a human <laughs> house. Wow, wouldn't that be ironic? Like, in sort of like angel heart. Oh, my God. I was made by Disney. Bada, kind of way. Um, Walmart. Where was I? What was I talking about? I'm losing it. I need more sleep. It's hard to get sleep when the world is descending into chaos. You were asking me, what were we talking about? Uh, what is your, like, um, most right. reward? Got it. I'm back on track. Thank you. Um, so some people, art is a very narrow, like kind of the old fashioned definition is art is just painting and drawing and sculpture. No way. Um, it's, it's at this point in the history of art, it's a pretty open-ended concept. Absolutely. So I, I don't know. I think different media have different advantages and disadvantages. Mm -hmm. Some things demand one medium and some demand another. And I like to ideally combine media, um, in ways that people don't expect. Because to me, the name of the game is creativity. And the stuff I like the most is what I consider to be the most creative stuff. And what I shoot for is creativity. And some people are like, oh, that's weird. Or, oh, he just wants attention or whatever. My real goal beyond setting the world on fire is just to be as innovative and creative as I can because creativity refuses to die, thank God. I mean, I think it's the, it honestly, to get a little lofty and serious here, I believe that in some ways creativity is the agent the catalyst of evolution you know um, mutation is as well but i think that the two are definitely related mutant creativity so i don't know i can't just give you an answer for one sometimes it's pure music instrumental music you know right. that i probably that comes out of my voice but it's you know lyricless sometimes it's a story sometimes it's a film films are a little harder because usually they're more time intensive they're more fragmented they're more uh, collaborative in a way, even if you're the auteur, like steering the project in a, with an iron fist, you generally need other people. I've made little films since I've been trapped in my house, but I mean, you know, that's fine. They are what they are, but um, anything you can kind of where the, 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 the barrier between the concept and the execution is uh, permeable, where you can break through it and execute that idea with ease to me is ideal. But it doesn't always work like that. And it's kind of interesting sometimes to watch, I don't know if I'm making any sense at this point. I am to me. But to watch sometimes in some media where it takes more time and it takes more unknowns, more variables to get the idea out. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's kind of, you got to be a little loose about it because, yeah, you've got your vision, but you also have to sometimes change the Victorian costume into a white lab coat as long as it works, you know? Um, so it's kind of interesting to watch the idea the concept, the original spark, the thing that gets your blood pumping, to sometimes watch it transform into what it actually turns out to be in the real world. So yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's a long ass. No, I love it. Very detailed, uh, very uh, rambling answer to your question. 
No, I love it. Yeah. It's, it's still with me? It. Anyone? Raise your hand if you're still here. I think you you got some more. Let's see. Becca, Sunny. Who else? Sunny Bunny. Sunny Bunny. Okay, I have a strange question, but what is the most bizarre thing you've ever done for money? <laughs> oh, what kind of answers do you get for that before I answer? Like what? You're okay, I'm sorry. Mom. I'm going to turn the tables, BJ. What's the <laughs> most bizarre answer you've gotten when you've asked people about the most bizarre thing they've done for money? Just like in a, in a nutshell. You are the first person that I've asked. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at you. Innovating. Look at me. Assuming. Okay. Um, besides the hippo? Besides the hippo. I call that for money because, I mean, I basically lived on tips and none of those like birds and vegetation that he was eating were tipping me. Unless you count like eating them as the tip. So um, money, money. I don't know if I can count the hippo. Maybe I'll have to come up with something different. You said most bizarre, was that specifically what you said? Mm -hmm. The most bizarre thing I've done for money? Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm not supposed to say this, but um, once I was, um, do you ever read A Tale of Two Cities by Dickens? Maybe a long time ago. Yeah, me too. So, but there was this guy who basically got drafted into being the double, right? For the, the was it the king? I can't remember, some royal. And he's the one who ended up getting I'm sorry, spoilers. No, come on. In a 50 year old novel, fuck you if you right. read it. Um, he was the one who got drafted and ended up getting the, the guillotine in place of the royal who should have, just like um. so many royals these days should get the guillotine. Just kidding, NSA, just kidding. Um, so I had to do that, but it wasn't for anybody lofty like a prince or a king, it was, it was for our um, a county assessor. So I had to be the double for the assessor. Um, the person who basically decides what property taxes, uh, what what um, what land value is, and then assesses your property tax. So I was drafted into being the devil, and I gave a speech that's just sort of like he does in the in the novel. It's just a far far better. But I was by myself at, at home, and this was before the pandemic, so no one even noticed. But yeah, so they paid me fifty bucks, and I uh, pretended to be the assessor for a day because of death threats. I can't tell if this is real or not. <laughs> we'll leave it. We'll leave. We'll leave the mystery. Save, save the mystery, BJ. Save yeah. The mystery. Oh, and once I um, someone hired me, gave me two hundred bucks to burn down a Starbucks in Encino. I'm done with you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> as far as you know, you're done yeah. with me. Are no, 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 no. I was kidding. <laughs> That's fine. You know, I got things I don't have to do, and no. places I don't have to go to. No, no. I got a plastic gun here to keep me company. Oh my God. Your drugs, stay in school, meditate, and get your exercise. Hi, yep. Sammy. Hi, Taylor. Um, T.S. No, probably T. Stone Barger. Yeah. You related to Sonny of uh, Hell's Angels Infinity? Um, That's... Next question. Come on. Yeah. Yes. Time to waste in. Yes. Um, what's something that you listen to that may surprise your fans? Something I listen to, mm -hmm. besides my neighbors doing it. Yep. <laughs> um, actually, I have not heard my neighbors do it. So either they don't do it, which is possible, or the walls are thick enough, which is also possible. Ceilings are not as thick, but the walls might be thick enough. So um, no, that doesn't count because I made it up. So wh what do I listen to that might surprise people? Mm -hmm. I'm a huge Bieber fan. I. I um, Especially his old stuff. No, fuck Justin Bieber. I don't listen to that shit. Um, no. God, do people even still listen to him anymore? You don't see his name I'm, in the maybe. online. No, he's done. Let's ask the poll. Let's let's. He's poll. probably he's probably gonna do a revival. Then he'll do a comeback tour. He's probably gonna do something totally different. Like he's probably gonna do like black metal now or something like that. We don't, we don't have, all we have is Shakira, Shakira for our answers. Now. What about Shakira, Shakira, Tara, not Tara? What about her? Do I listen to her? Do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Sorry if you're a Shakira fan. I don't mean to offend. Look, I, I just, I got to be honest. I, look, my taste is eclectic. I mean, it really is. I don't think I'm, just, everyone thinks their taste is eclectic. But I think it really is. He's alive, sadly. You're talking about me? Be no. 
Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, run. Uh, uh, but look, I try not to listen. Look, corporate music still sucks harder than ever. So I know that we all make exceptions because sometimes stuff just pleases your ears. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I just try to stay the hell away from it. Um, at least more contemporary corporate stuff. It's kind of hard to avoid. Ugh, rude, says Tara. We're having a full house moment here. Sorry, being honest. Fuck that shit. <laughs> I mean, look, corporate music to me, there's exceptions. There's always exceptions. I've had experiences even where someone was subjecting me to corporate radio. Something came out and I was like, ooh, what's that? But it's so rare for me. Right. More than anything, I think it's formulaic. It's the same kind of formula that you get from a, from a reboot movie or a remake or the 15th version of Spider-Man. Fuck Spider-Man, okay? Spider-Man can take his web and shoot it right up his anus, as far as I care. And that would be interesting because if he did, what would happen? Would he get stuck on there? Would he like, ah, and then if he did, would he like pull out his innards? <laughs> I want to see that. Somebody no. with some home CGI chops and technology and gear, please show me what happens when Spider-Man shoots the web up his own ass. I was, there was a festival one, that one of my movies played in years ago called Spike and Mike's Sick and Twisted Festival of Animation. Yeah, yeah, Spider-Man, whoever that was. Somebody make that film, right? Sick and Twisted is pretty much done, I think. Although I did see like a retrospective of it at Comic-Con. Was that last year? Last year, I guess it was. Was that last year? Yeah, last year. Feels like a decade ago. Mm -hmm. What were we talking about? Oh, the thing I listened to? I don't know. I, I haven't know. given you guys anything yet, really. I don't know. Fuck. You know what I don't listen to now? <laughs> I don't listen to my neighbors fucking. And I don't listen to Bieber or Shakira. Sorry. Perfect shit. <laughs> But yeah, I try, look, creativity, innovation. Look, oh, here's my rant, one of my 15,000 rants. Business people want to reproduce things. There's a proven brand. This is the big strategy of showbiz and has been for a long time. Proven brands. Is there a demonstrated market for this product? Ooh, I hate even talking about it like this. Is there a demonstrated market for this project? Yes, there was another version of this product that showed up 10 years ago and it demonstrated X turnout, X tur uh, return on our investment. Let's reproduce it. This is what we are living in. This is what we're living in. This is movies. This is not everything. There is absolutely incredibly creative stuff still being pumped out, which to me gives me some hope. But I feel like the predominant flavor of our corporate culture, and yes, it is. It's a corporate culture. The dominant flavor is corporate flavor, and that is reproduction. That is proven brands. That is the death of creativity. I mean, not really. I'm being a little hyperbolic, but no, I, I'm 100% I'm serious about this. This is not Danny Shtick. Who's your go-to punk band, Becca? Is it Becca? Okay. Another Becca. And art, Becca? Other Becca? Um, so honestly, it just makes me want to push back on that shit even harder. It really does. And it's, again, there's still like, look, there was a show that I fell in love with, a series that of course got canceled after two years. And Bezos, that piece of shit, who <laughs> had made like $13 billion profit in one of the days in this pandemic, it's on his channel, but I watched it and it was worth it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I hate that I, it was on there, just like, my experience, like I use Instagram and I hate that it's owned by Facebook, but face crook, sucker fucker bird. But you know what I mean? Like some cases, this is our culture. In some cases, it's unavoidable, inescapable. Welcome to Monopoly world. And some people miraculously still manage to kind of turn the tools against themselves and do subversive stuff in those arenas. That's really inspiring to me. But by and large, I try to just like push as hard as I can against it and go in the opposite goddamn direction. So there's one to grow on, kids. Something to think about. Wow. You get serious every now and then. It's up that to you. You know, I'm a trickster. You got to figure out what's what. Mm. What's real, what isn't. Possibly nothing. Possibly nothing. Well, I am ready to hear your story. <laughs> Poor BJ. Poor BJ. Like, Sort of poor thing. I feel like I'm like, I've got her in a chair blindfolded with her hands tied and she's being subjected to some kind of Guantanamo shit. You were saying, I'm sorry, I got it. It's hard because I got to get too story. close to the phone. You see my mm -hmm. nose hairs. And if, if I get too far, I can't hear you. So you're fine. 
I know I'm fine, but I, go ahead. No, um, okay. I'm ready to hear Lovely your burns. Ooh, <laughs> you wish you could touch them, don't you, people? Oh, they're so soft. And they're kind of, there's like a slight, like, beginning of a curl in it, because my hair is curly, believe it or not. Um, not like tight curled, but like, you know, I, I had long curly hair, but I was thinning on top. What a travesty, turning into what's his name Gallagher but yeah so there's a little bit of curl so there's this nice texture man I could stroke them all day get your mind out of the gutter um what tell me your story <laughs> I don't know well we have what like 10 minutes something like that okay so you want to hear about what I did last weekend sure say it like you actually care BJ because yeah. I'm not <laughs> I'm not inspired enough to tell this very detailed story about what I did last weekend based yeah. on yeah. Yes, I want to hear it. <laughs> you want to hear it? I do. So there I was, face to face in a dark Hong Kong alley with TV's Mini Pearl, formerly of the Grand Old Opry in the country western Yuck Fest Hee Ha. She was as high as anyone I've ever seen, mainly because of that intravenous supply of DMT that was coursing through her veins from her mobile wheeled IV drip. Yet she was strangely, eerily coherent. In her other hand, she clutched a broken bottle of King Cobra malt liquor. As she menacingly brandished the depleted 40, she whispered incantations in a language that resembled Aramaic. Although it might have been some form of ancient Farsi, I suppose. You know, with Minnie's heavy southern drawl, it was hard to tell, really. Even though Farsi is of Indo-European origin and Aramaic belongs to the Afro-Asiatic family of Semitic languages. You know, at one point I swore that I heard her mutter, where's the beef? in one of those languages, which is not entirely out of the question, given her extensive collection of mid-1980s TV commercials, which she recently had transferred from Betamax to DVD at a small transfer facility in Burbank? Wait, no, 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 North Hollywood. Anyway, I knew I could take her on a normal day, but I had just been discharged from my local urgent care facility. Uh, a recent uh, Jell-O Pudding Pops binge had resulted in an acute case of uh, mercury poisoning. And, you know, I knew that the pudding pops had some degree of mercury, but it turns out that evil Cosby, he'd actually downplayed the amount in those government mandated public service announcements. And I wasn't my usual spry self that night. So, you know, I was, I was more than a bit edgy about that encounter. Now, old school Muay Thai kickboxing, right? It teaches that the best defense is a good offense. So I quickly, I leaped into action with a spinning elbow to Minnie Pearl's larynx. In her face, it registered the shock of the blow, and she sputtered wildly and crashed to the pavement as a spray of liquid DMT swirled about her fallen form in slow motion, like drops of paint in a Blue Man Group promotional video or beads of sweat in a flash dance inspired early 80s music bid by, say, the Thompson Twins or maybe, I don't know, Kaja Gugu or Dexy's Midnight Runners. I cautiously approached. Minnie's crumpled body. Suddenly, Minnie sprung up from the alley floor in one incredible rapid surging movement. She hovered above me in midair, supernaturally defying gravity, engulfed in a pulsating neon lavender glow, her head rotating rapidly about her neck as she flapped her arms wildly and screamed. <sighs> Despite stock market advocates' recent claims of improvement, the economic crisis has only begun. The ramifications of decades of epic economic manipulation and institutional financial subterfuge will continue to be felt for many, many years to come. And then just as suddenly, she plummeted back to the pavement, inert lifeless and um that was my weekend oh and um i also um did virtual bowling with some friends wow well it was a hell of a weekend let me tell you well <laughs> you kind of got the sense of like wow i'm fighting mini pearl this is crazy I, if anyone knows you look it up jesus there's an internet and fighting me, but she could kill me. She's got that bottle, but it's wow, you know, it's just sort of a sublime kind of like, you know, yeah. sort of, you know, it was, it was pretty cool, you know, life, right? 
Sometimes yeah. you just go, oh, yeah, yeah, life. Well. <laughs> okay, do yeah. you want to play a game of Would You Rather, or do you want to build a poem with me? Whatever you want, darling. I feel like I have monopolized this conversation to an absurd degree. It's yours. It's your conversation. Hush, hush, darling. Um, that's actually, I'm, I won't talk about it right now. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is about me. I know, I know. There is no I in the interview. I know. Okay. <laughs> Good one. There, there is, but I guess that's the joke. Anyway, you were saying, in our remaining six minutes. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's do it. Would you rather? Maybe we can write a poem later. <laughs> Sounds good. I'll okay. Come. I got nothing else to fucking do. Yes. Just me and my Care Bear. Please come back and we'll do a whole poem. Yes, your you camera. Care, me and my Care Bear and my gun. That's all I, that's all I need. Fuck. I don't okay. need anything else. It's Sunshine Bear too, right? I guess, I don't know, I didn't watch that. Does he have a sun on his belly? Yes, he does. Wow. Sunshine Bear. Okay. Wow, wow. He has a really lovely vagina as well. I won't show it to you. I don't know, I'm even the internet has standards. Okay, um, would you rather have finger-sized nipples or nipple-sized fingers? <laughs> <laughs> finger-sized nipples. That would not, you couldn't handle things very well. Or um, finger-sized nipples, nipple-sized. Let's go with the nipple-sized fingers for that very reason. Nipple-sized fingers, wow, okay. Um, would you great, you put some thought into this, I can tell. Oh, yes, <laughs> so much thought. Um, would you rather... Would, yeah. Would you rather wear wet socks or wet underwear? <laughs> for how long? I mean, Dang. I'll do anything for an hour, obviously. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, for how long? I'm oh. so <laughs> I didn't mean that, as far as that I know. Sad. So, um, for how long? Like an hour, a day, two weeks? A two days. Two days. And the thing magically stays wet for two days? It's like yes. self-replenishing liquids. <laughs> yes. Wow, wet underwear? You're gonna chafe like a motherfucker. You're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna need baby powder and baby powder is carcinogenic and that's for mm -hmm. real. Um, wet socks, oh my God, your feet are gonna be like a mushroom pit. Dude, that's a tough one. Mushroom pit, diaper rash. Like, and when I say diaper rash, I mean like intensive care unit level <laughs> of diaper rash. Like you're probably gonna get COVID. Uh, that's a tough one. Do I have to choose? Yes, that's the game, Danny. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go with the feet. Gotta yeah. protect my jewels for what that's worth. Would you rather die and be found on a pile? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I love it. I wish we had more time for this. Would I rather die? Yes. No, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> go ahead. What? No. Would you rather Did die? What? Would you rather die and be found on? <laughs> A pile of um, adult toys or... <laughs> hey, 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 stop. Save <laughs> image for a few seconds. So you die and you're found on a pile of adult sex toys. And Listen they, to the other half. Did they a kill pile. you? Is that like you died by those sex toys? <laughs> Your other option is... Yeah, but I want to make sure I understand this before I make a decision. I don't know because I, I, I don't know. Okay, let's go ahead. Say, I'm sorry. You were saying, would say, I rather do that, which is interesting, or... or uh, Pile I'm literally. Just wait, I have to interrupt. I'm not a nihilist. I have very strong beliefs. MK, sorry to contradict you, but thank you for playing. You, there's some lovely parting gifts for you. Um, bit of a trickster, but not a nihilist. We can talk about that later over a cup of joe in the south of France. Ops, ops, oops. Go ahead. So pile of sex toy death. Like, okay, that's your legacy. Or? Or found with... Uh, it literally said a pile of drugs. So a pile <laughs> of drugs. Boy, you do have a nice dark sensibility. I like that. Okay, so basically your legacy, right? Either way, this is how you're found, right? It's like, yeah, he sex toyed himself to death. Yeah. <laughs> he stuck so many goddamn anal intruders that it, his fucking heart exploded and exploded out his mouth. And there he is in a pile of 50 anal intruders dead. <laughs> And that's his legacy to the world. Not any of this glorious art that he tried to make. It was the fucking anal intruders, right? <laughs> did I get this right? I mean, as in, did I understand? Good. The other one is you drugged yourself to death. Yeah. Like you wasted your potential with stupid fucking pharmaceutical entertainments. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> dude, is this is this is this real? Have you seen the future? Are these, is no. one of these how I actually die? No. I mean, you know. Uh, <laughs> you gotta choose. You agreed to this, Danny. You did. Live Instagram live, <laughs> not in a studio in two people's houses. Um, give me the drugs. The Do drugs. I get to choose what drugs? Yes. <laughs> it might as well be good drugs. I yeah. never tried heroin. I will never try heroin. I'm being very serious here. You should not try heroin, and I'm I'm sorry to tell you what to do, but don't do heroin, you dummies. But fuck, <laughs> you're gonna die. Actually, I decided though, if I was gonna die, like if I knew I was gonna die, if I had a terminal illness, that I would go bodyboarding at like place like Mavericks or Chopu. Chopu, let's go with Chopu because it's Tahiti. It's like this massive, dangerous, gonna destroy you wave. And I'm like, dude, if you make the wave, you've had the ride of your life. If you don't, oh, well, you know, you were going to die anyway. (laughs) So let's leave that. Let's let that be my legacy for this conversation. Not a pile of drugs in a a pointless death. (laughs) No poo is not pointless. Tara picks the drugs. Are we done? No. Eight o'clock. No? Or we just go to the cut us off? Because I'm willing to keep going. I'm kind of having fun with this. They'll tell us. Do you think dog, MK wants to know if I think dogs should vote. Good question. I don't really know what dog, I think dogs would probably be very right wing because they're, they play a real dominant submission game. I know everyone loves their dogs. I love dogs. But you know, you either dominate a dog or you submit to a dog. That's pretty right wing sounding to me. So I don't think dogs should vote. I think things are bad enough right now. We have the fucking RNC. Oh my God. Ruff, 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 reference. <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. You were gonna get my dogs wound up. <laughs> um, okay. So do we just go to the, the cut us off. Is that what happens here? I'm gonna yeah, do that. yeah. We're riding this out. All right. Would you rather Let's do be- it? Got my gun. Got my caravan. <laughs> to the end. Let's ride this crazy train. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather be eaten alive by a bear <laughs> or, okay. or by a wolf? Okay, I'm, that's an easy one, bear. Because okay. wolves, I mean, first of all, actually, do they have to, let me qualify that. Do they have to be successful in the eating or do, could they maybe attempt and I able, I'm able to fight them off? Because I can take a wolf. I think I can take a wolf. I cannot take a bear. Maybe a little bear, I could take a cub, but anything bigger than cub, I don't think I'm taking it, you know? Right. You know, bear for sure, Becca. She wants to get chomped by a Florida Everglades bear. Um, That's probably a fantasy of hers. I'm sorry to out you. But I would say, look, if I'm going to lose no matter what, bear, because then you're going to, you're going to go much faster. You're going to, the bear is going to chomp you and you're just like, I am dead. Or as they say in Shakespeare, I am slain. Um, But if, if I have a chance, if I can win this battle, I'm taking on a wolf. I'll kick that Lobo's ass. Oh yeah. Bring it Lobo. Bring your hate mail. (laughs) <laughs> bring your paws, bring your little canine teeth. I'll take you. I will fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> Knee injury and all. I'll fuck you up, Lobo. El Lobo. A lot of people are pulling for the bear. I don't know what their logic I is. I know they time. are. My interview. All oh, right, there is a bear. Thank you for reminding me, Tara. I am saying it in front of the bear. I'm not worried about him. He's a serious opium addict. He has no energy, no life force. He just sits there and drools on himself. Sad, sad. Just his little, his little Care Bear vagina all day. Oh my God! Would you? We're still be... going with this. We're still going. Let's roll. We started a little late. Maybe that's why. But then we Facebook did. cuts you happened. off, right? Yeah, it will. It'll oh, tell us. In the morning. Same thing. Maybe Would not forever, rather... though. This monopoly might get broken up. Would you rather be constantly itchy or constantly sticky? <laughs> oh, that sucks. That's a shitty choice. Yes, it that is. is a shitty choice. Not quite catatonic left. Um, Luft, sorry. Uh, I don't like being like when my hands are sticky, man, I, I pretty quickly wash it off. Yeah. When I'm itchy, that's like torture. If you couldn't scratch any, I don't know how people deal with that. Oh, 30 seconds. It was remaining. sticky. It's a shitty choice, but that's the game. We got 30 seconds remaining. You want to come back in October? 
October. Uh, let me let me check my calendar. I don't know. Get in touch with me later. Maybe. Yeah, okay. sure. October sounds good. My October's wide open at the moment. Okay, awesome. Um, where can people <laughs> find your stuff? Okay, thank you so much for being here. Three seconds. That's it, we're done. Shouldn't we just? We're done.